here long, there was one snake I really wanted to cruise. We have a clutch of seven eggs to cut here in just a minute, and hopefully, Crash, this guy is angry. So here it is, guys, the last chance for the year to produce that dream animal that I've been thinking about for the last, like, really four years. What do we got? What do we got? What do we got? What do we got? Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Definitely a banana. Definitely a banana. I'm sorry that you got stuck doing his job. No, you're not. No, I am. I am. If I had more time, I would help you. Oh, Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the vlog. I hope the start of your day is amazing. You know, I've got this banana super chocolate right here that is incredible, and I've told you guys all year long, there was one snake I really wanted to produce, and that was the banana camel, which is a super chocolate pinstripe banana. You can see how absolutely purple and beautiful this animal is, and I just think that the pinstripe, it should reduce all of the yellow and make it a predominantly purple snake. And just so visually you guys get an understanding of what I'm talking about, this happens to be a banana chocolate pinstripe, and then this is the camo ball python. This is without the banana. So my thoughts are when you mix this really dark animal with this beautiful banana right here, this should turn purple. So you would think all of this markings down here would be super purple, just like this banana chocolate pinstripe, but all over. I've been dreaming about this animal for like four years. And you guys might remember that we actually hit the pastel banana a camo. So this was the banana camo I was searching for, but it was with pastel. Now the pastel gene oftentimes kind of mutes the purple in animals. So ooh, so I don't really know if this is going to be a brighter purple animal or not because we've never produced it. It's still a gorgeous snake and I love it. And ironically enough, we produced three of these and they were all pastel. So we missed the actual banana camo. And today is the last chance I have for the entire year. We have a clutch of seven eggs to cut here in just a minute. And hopefully, crash, this guy is angry and hopefully we'll get lucky and finally hit this animal last year we whiffed on every single clutch it's taken me two or three years to raise these animals up so i've been thinking about this for a long time so let's cross our fingers and hope this time we get lucky so here it is guys the last chance for the year to produce that dream animal that i've been thinking about for the last like really four years because you figure it took me a couple years to raise up the animals then last year we whiffed on every single clutch this year this is it of course we produced the pastel camo bananas but i just think that these ones could be good so we have what two four six seven eggs left Will my dreams come true? I'm not 100% sure. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. Again, we could produce a bunch of other really cool animals in this clutch too, but man, if I could hit that camo, I would be so happy. What do we have here? What do we have here? I just gotta open this up a little bit more. See what we have. Okay. Yeah, it looks like maybe, maybe a banana chocolate spinner. I think that's probably what it is. You know, that spider animal usually will kind of dull down the purple a little bit. So that one definitely is a miss for sure. We got, come on, 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 come on. Ah! Nope, this is a normal spinner. So not a banana at all. So a normal spinner, no chocolate in that at all. Oh gosh, my heart rate is up, guys. You know, you just, when you start off and you want to produce something for so long, you're like, oh, I got to do it. Another spinner, guys, just a normal spinner. No chocolate, we are down to four eggs. Four eggs, come on, let's do this. Oh my gosh, I am so nervous. Please, 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 please. Uh, you guys aren't even gonna believe this. Another spinner ball python. Three spinners in a row, no bananas, no chocolate. We've yet to hit a chocolate. Maybe that first animal is a banana chocolate spinner. I'm not 100% sure. <sighs> Three eggs, guys, come on, please. Let's hit this sucker, I wanna do it. I don't wanna wait a whole nother year. What do we have here? What do we have here? I don't know what we have there. This is definitely a banana, but it's weird. It's like I don't see any pattern at all. So it doesn't have the camo pattern to it. This might, I don't know, this might be another chocolate banana spinner, which just has such reduced pattern that I can't actually even see it in the egg when it claws out, but it doesn't have the purple. So I know it's not a camo. Bah! Two eggs left, guys. Oh my God, if I miss. I swear, two years in a row, I am gonna freak out. I mean, that was, we had like five or six clutches last year. And I think we had five or six clutches this year and we still yet to hit. What do we have here? What do we have here? Definitely another banana. Another, I think another banana chocolate spinner, not the super. So that's what I'm missing, right? Is that super chocolate. That super chocolate is what makes that purple. And I need to hit it. This is the last egg, you guys. Oh my gosh. Please, 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 please. What do we got? What do we got? What do we got? What do we got? Let me see, let me see, let me see. Definitely a banana. Definitely a banana. 
I don't think it is. Guys, this is the hard part. There's never been a banana super chocolate pinstripe or the banana camo, so I don't know really what it's gonna look like. Although I've seen the pastel version, I don't think this is it, but there's a chance this could be it right here. The more I'm looking at it, the more I'm thinking this could be the banana camo. And I might just be disappointed it's not as purple as I thought because I absolutely do see kind of a camo look to this animal. I think we hit it guys, but it just wasn't purple. So that might, I, until they hatch out, I'm not gonna say. When these guys hatch out, we'll know. I may have just hit the animal and it may have been a big, big disappointment. And that happens when you're breeding snakes. Sometimes in your mind, you're thinking when I mix this to this, it's gonna be so amazing. And sometimes it's better than you think. And sometimes it's worse than you think. I have a feeling we hit it and I have a feeling that I'm a little disappointed. But until this bugger crawls out two or three days from now, we won't know, I promise. I'll keep you guys up to date, but uh, hey, at least we have a swing at it, right? This next clutch is actually a pinstripe female bred to a fire bee male, so that's a pastel, it's a fire, and it's spider, so we should get some pretty cool stuff, but there's only three eggs, so you know the odds aren't gonna necessarily be in our favor when it comes to that, so we could have really great stuff, or we could miss, that's just the way it goes. So first egg here, let's go ahead. Big eggs, too, these guys are nice. <laughs> and right off the rip, we actually got a, well, it might be a fireball python. I was thinking it was a normal ball python, but the fact that it is it's probably a fireball python. Just taking a look real quick and seeing, yeah, just looks like probably a fireball python. It's got a really cool kind of pattern towards the back, but it doesn't look like it's anything else than that. So egg number two, let's go ahead and see what we got here. All right, ooh yeah, this is pretty. All right, so that's, that's, this is a dragonfly. So this is the pastel, it's the fire, and it's the pinstripe, which is really cool. So all this was missing basically that we could get was the spider, which would have made it a fire spinner blast, but nevertheless, still really beautiful snake. Last egg in this clutch. Let's see what we got here. And it looks like another dragonfly. So that's not too bad. A couple dragonflies in a fire. I mean, with three eggs, you can't expect that much. I'll take those odds every day of the week. And then the last clutch of the day. And by the way, for those of you guys that like egg cutting, uh, I hope that you enjoyed this. For those of you that are like, that's boring. You've cut so many clutches of eggs. We only have like 10 or 12 clutches left. So the year is almost done with that. But I'm kind of bummed out because I love egg cutting. This was actually a black pastel pinstripe female bred to a mahogany male. So if you like dark stuff, this could produce some really cool stuff. The downside is, there's only two eggs, so I don't know what we're gonna get. Again, a couple small clutches towards the end of the year here. So let's go ahead and hope that we're gonna get something really awesome in these last two eggs. First egg, oh my gosh. It looks like literally a normal ball python. So we missed everything. Not only do we have two eggs, but then we have uh, no mutations at all. So last egg for the day and last egg for this clutch. Let's go ahead and see if we get something cool. It'd be nice to hit the odds on this last one, right? Oh yeah, well that's really cool. This looks like it's probably a mahogany pinstripe, which is pretty darn cool. Could have some black pastel in there too, I'm not 100% sure, but nevertheless, definitely a cool dark snake, really kind of cryptic patterning. So uh, that is your egg cutting for the day. We may have hit my dream snake, or we may not. We're gonna have to wait to see until it hatches. If you guys didn't know, Eric is gone for another week. He's over visiting the homeland over in the UK and his parents over there. Regardless, uh, Lori has to pick up his slack, right? Unfortunately, yes, that is my job. Your job. <laughs> so what is, uh, the good news is, is that at least clubbirds are done, right? Uh, yes, so main, mainly most of them are off food. So now it's just a matter of spot cleaning them. Uh, the razors and the babies still have to get fed. So I'll have to go through those this week and, and basically make sure he's doing a good job at his job. <laughs> and the reason that the clubbirds are off food is they're actually getting ready for brumation. I'll talk more about that in a minute. But yeah, we still have to feed all the baby snakes that he does, the razors we still have to go, and then we can start kind of pushing the razors. I'll talk more about that as well. So uh, I'm sorry that you got stuck doing his job. No, you're not. No, I am. I am. If I had more time, I would help you. Oh, how convenient. I know. I how know. Convenient. All right, Keep so I'll filming. let you get back to work. Keep Okay, filming. bye. And to go back to what Lori's saying, the adult colubrids, like this Mexican black king snake here, actually go into brumation. It does a couple things. Number one, it kind of gets them out of our hair for a little bit. It's good for the animals to go dormant, as well as the fact that it can actually trigger breeding. There's something that's called spermatogenesis that oftentimes males need to produce viable sperm for the next year. So basically what we do is after the breeding season, we work really hard to get the animals back 
cup to weight so that they look really good. I mean, this lavender snow cow king is perfect. And we want that body weight to be really well so that they can actually get through a brumation period. But because once the animals are down in brumation, they will completely go dormant. Meaning that, you know, basically they can't digest or do anything like that. So if they have any kind of fecal matter or any kind of digestive thing going on, they can actually rot and die. So what we do is we actually stop feeding them about four weeks before we put them in brumation, completely clean them out 100%. So there's nothing in their system whatsoever. That way when they're brumating, they can go dormant and they won't die. The interesting thing is they'll go down to about 55 degrees Fahrenheit for three months and they literally hardly lose any weight. They basically will still be alert. If you open the cage, they'll look at you, they'll flick their tongue, but basically they kind of sleep for three months. Again, it's kind of good for us because it gives us an opportunity to really focus on other things as well as it's good for the animals and good for next year's production. And basically with the animals in brumation, it gives us an opportunity to work on some of our razor snakes. I mean, there's things like this corn snake here that's actually heifer scaleless that is just on the cusp of potentially breeding next year. It's not quite big enough now, but you know, when we're so busy, sometimes we can't really baby the animals. So over the winter, when the adults are in brumation, we can really spend some time on these guys and hopefully we can put enough size on them where they can actually breed this next year. Now, again, the adults, we actually will brumate for about three months, but look at this butter terrazzo corn right here. Absolutely incredible. But you know, these guys can actually go down into brumation for like two weeks. So if we feed these guys all the way till say the middle of January, maybe they'll have enough size on them where we can actually clean them out for a couple weeks, put them down for just a short period of time, like maybe a two week brumation, and maybe we'll get lucky and actually get some clutches from them. And trust me, we have some amazing ones. This is a blaze going eye, an Apalachicola County King Snake. Absolutely breathtaking. So we have a lot of colubrids that are on the cusp that might breed next year. But the fact that the adults are in brumation will really give us an opportunity to spend some time with these guys and hopefully get lucky and get them up to size to breed next year. You know, it's wild. I've been dreaming about this all purple ball python for so long and it's kind of weird to not know if number one, I hit it or if I did hit it, that I would be disappointed. The chocolate banana stuff is incredible. Like this chocolate banana spider right here. It's just absolutely insane. But maybe in this case, the banana camel just isn't the all purple snake. Again, I've been kind of dreaming about an all purple ball python for a long time. I want to call it the Barney ball python. So if I didn't hit it with this one, if it crawls out and it turns out that it is a banana camel, but it just isn't as beautiful as possible, it's back to the drawing board. Let me know in the comments if you've got an idea how I can make a purple ball python, the Barney ball. Well, I guess we're all going to have to wait in suspense about this dream animal of mine, the Barney ball python. Will it hatch out or did I miss it? I'm not 100% sure. I promise you I'll update you in the next couple days when it crawls on the egg. So wish me luck and maybe it'll turn purple. Who knows? Regardless, if you enjoyed this video, here's another video of me cutting an absolutely amazing clutch of ball pythons, an entire playlist that you guys can just bowl through over here. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to turn those post notification bells on. Have a wonderful day and be kind to someone. I promise I'm going to see you guys tomorrow.